All right, this is 6.2 in Advanced Geometry, and today we get to learn about our quadrilaterals. Remember, a quadrilateral is just a polygon with four sides, uh, but there's some very special types of quadrilaterals depend on what's going on with those sides. Uh, so first off, if you check out this picture that we have of this quadrilateral, you'll see these arrows. And of course, we know arrows mean parallel sides, and there's one pair of parallel sides right here, and there's another pair of parallel sides right here. So this is called a parallelogram. Uh, a quadrilateral will be a parallelogram if it has two pairs of parallel sides. So you might need to like pause the video if you need to write these definitions. I do want you to write these definitions down. You have to have them down. And you have to spell the word correctly. Like parallelogram, it's got to be spelled correctly. So uh, if I'm moving a little too fast, just pause the video and go ahead and write the, the correct definitions down. Uh, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if it's got two pairs of parallel sides, so that bad boy right there is a parallelogram. Uh, this next type of quadrilateral here, you'll notice the markings in it, it's just got tick marks, and all four of the tick marks are the same, so that quadrilateral has four equal sides, and that's called a rhombus. R-H-O-M-B-U-S, a rhombus. That's what our friend Rom rides to school. He takes the rhombus. Uh, a quadrilateral is a rhombus if it has four equal sides. So that will look like so. And uh, this guy, this quadrilateral, it's got one, two, three, four right angles. So that's what's known as a rectangle. We finally get to actually know what a rectangle is. Uh, a rectangle, uh, if it has four right angles, please don't spell rectangle wrong. It's something you've been dealing with since elementary school. A quadrilateral is a rectangle if it has four right angles. And then we get like a little magic happen. This guy, it's like the rhombus and the rectangle had a baby right here because this guy does have four right angles and it does have four equal sides. So when a rhombus and a rectangle have a baby, they call it a square. A uh, quadrilateral is a square if it has four right angles and four equal sides. So a quadrilateral is a square if it has four right angles and four equal sides. Moving on, uh, this dotted stuff is not supposed to be here, so just kind of like imagine that it's not there real quick. And if we look at this guy now, it's quadrilateral. It's got one pair of sides the same right here. Like if I highlight them, let me go a different color, highlight them in blue. These blue guys are the same. And then these red guys right here, they're also the same, but the blue ones and the red ones are different. So this is called a kite. A quadrilateral is a kite if it has two distinct pairs of consecutive sides equal. And this is by far the toughest definition out of all of those. A kite has two distinct pairs. What that means is, we'll just kind of say that for right now as it means different, two different pairs. I had the red pair right here, and I have the green pair. But they've got to be consecutive, so that means they're right in a row. They're touching each other, like the red pair is touching each other, and the green pair is touching each other. Two distinct pair of consecutive sides equal. If you check out this guy right here, like this does have two sets of sides uh, that are equal to each other, but they're not consecutive at all. You got the red set, which are not touching each other at all, and you got the green set. So this is not a kite because the sides that were the same are not consecutive. They're not touching each other. So a kite looks like so. And then this guy, if you notice, it's just got one pair of parallel sides. And what that's called is that's called a trapezoid. We need to make sure we spell that right. It's a trapezoid. A trapezoid. And it's got a tricky definition. It's just something to remember. A quadrilateral is a trapezoid if it has at least one pair of parallel sides. At least is the old magic phrase right there. If it's got at least one pair of parallel sides, then that would be known as a trapezoid. And then finally, the last one, I want to cross out the word trapezoid that they have right there and replace it with quadrilateral. Okay, because we're just talking about quadrilaterals. So obviously this quadrilateral is a trapezoid because it's got at least one pair of parallel sides. But it's also got these angles the same. And what I'd like you to notice is that 
in a trapezoid, where's my highlighter? There it is. <clears throat> These are the parallel sides right here, correct? Well, those are called the bases. In a trapezoid, the parallel sides are the bases. So these angles right here, since both angles touch the same base, they're touching this base right here, those are called the base angles. And this quadrilateral right here, it is a trapezoid since it's got at least one pair of parallel sides, but it's fancier than that. It's got base angles equal. Well, what kind of triangle has base angles equal? Well, obviously, that's isosceles triangle, so this isn't a triangle, though it's a trapezoid, so this is an isosceles trapezoid. <coughs> A uh, quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid if it has at least one pair of parallel sides and base angles equal. It's got at least one pair of parallel sides, so that's the definition of trapezoid over again, but this is the new part, and it's got base angles equal. So there's our types of quadrilaterals. All right, so on the back side, they say recognize what type of quadrilateral is drawn and then find the area. Well, here we go. We've got this quadrilateral. See all these dashed lines? That's just like helpful information. The quadrilateral is the guy on the outside. It's got at least one pair of parallel sides, so he's a trapezoid. we got to spell him correctly, trapezoid. And then it says uh, find the area of this puppy. So, all right, according to our cheat sheet, there's a quadrilateral section. Uh, we've got area of a trapezoid, parallelogram, and kite. Here's the area of a trapezoid. We'll always start by writing the formula down. So capital A stands for area, and that'll equal one half times the height of that trapezoid times the quantity of B1 plus B2, where those Bs stand for the bases. And in a trapezoid, the bases are the parallel sides. And there's two different ones, and it doesn't matter which one's which. One of them's 15, one of them's 23. What would you do? Who cares which one's which? But the height has to be perpendicular between those two bases. So you see this 7 inches right here. We've got the right angle box, meaning it's perpendicular. So here's our height of that puppy. So now, let's just substitute in what we know. We do not know the area. 1 half is still 1 half. The height is 7. And then we put in the two bases, 15 plus 23, which I do want you to, like, uh, put them in separately. Don't go ahead and add them. We're, we'll save that for our next step here. So now we can clean things up. Half a seven, I don't like that. That's a, seven's an odd number. So I want to see what that 15 plus 23 is. So everything's coming down, and 15 plus 23 is 38. I like that much better because if I got to take half of something, I love to take half of an even number. So I'll grab my calculator here, and I will actually take 38 divided by 2. That same thing as multiplying by 1 half is divided by 2, and you get 16, and we can go ahead and take it times that height of 7 right away and get... Oh, I took 32 divided by 2. My bad. I need to take 38 divided by 2. Sorry about that. And get 19, and then take that times the 7, and we'll get 133 for our area. So going back, all this stuff, the area equals 133. And then the label, since they give us inches, but area is always square units, will be square inches. And we'll box that. So let's do that again here. It says recognize the type of quadrilateral that we have. Well, this quadrilateral has two pairs of parallel sides, and from the other side, we know that that's a parallelogram. So, parallelogram, and I spelled it wrong, two L's, then one L. Parallelogram, double the L first, parallelogram, and it's not parallelogram, not a gram. So then, let's find its area formula. Area is just base times height nice and simple. Remember the height is perpendicular between the two bases. Well, the interesting thing is the parallel sides are the bases, so these blue guys could actually be considered bases as well since they're parallel. But I know the base I want to use is 19 because it's the one that's perpendicular to this 8 right here. So I just substitute those in. Area equals 8 times 19. Then we punch her in, and 8 times 19 is 152. And I need a label, so since this is in centimeters, that would be centimeters squared. The next guy, 
oh, what is this type of quadrilateral? Well, it's got two distinct pairs of consecutive sides equal. So that old boy is a kite. Maybe that would write down. It's a kite. <coughs> and then its formula, we'll write it down first. I'll give myself a little room to do work here. Area equals 1 half d1 times d2 where the D stands for the diagonals. You've got to know the diagonals of this kite to be able to find its area. Well, they give us some information here. They say the distance from A to C is 22 feet. I'll put that in my picture. Then they say the distance from D to B is 9 feet. And you can see here that those are the two diagonals, so I can just straight up substitute them into my formula. 1 half times diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. It doesn't matter which one's which. So I know that half of 22 is 11, and then 11 times 9 is 99. And my label up here, they said it was feet, so this area will be in square feet. Type this guy is. Well, let's check him out. He's got at least one pair of parallel sides, so that would make him a trapezoid. And then he's got these arc marks down here, which means that the base angles are congruent to each other. So it's more than just a trapezoid. This is an isosceles trapezoid. Isosceles trapezoid is what this guy is. He's an isosceles trapezoid. So uh, just because it's an isosceles trapezoid doesn't mean it's still not a trapezoid. So we'll use the same formula that we used before. Area equals 1 half times the height times the quantity of base 1 plus base 2 and we'll substitute in. The bases are the parallel sides and the height is that dashed segment there that's perpendicular to those. So half 26 times 37 plus 58. And we'll kind of kill two birds with one stone right here. I could take half of 26 right away and get 13 and then when I add the 37 and 58 together just punch that in and I get 95 and another punch 13 times 95. That will get you 1235. And then the label up here was inches, so it will be in inches squared. It's always good to make sure all your dimensions are in the same unit also. Like, it'd be weird if the, one of these was in feet, we'd have to convert, so you got to be very careful. Number five type of quadrilateral is this. Well, it's got four right angles. So according to the other side, that would be a rectangle, my friends. And the formula for rectangle is not listed on your cheat sheet. That's because that's one you need to have memorized. Area of a rectangle, we've done already this year, is length times width. Doesn't matter which one's the length or the width, so area will equal 3 times 11, and that is 33 square yards, baby. And finally, this guy, he is a rectangle because he's got four right angles, but he's also got four equal sides. So that is called a square, which we've discussed also this year. That's a square. And then area of a square, also not listed. Don't use length times width because that will get you into trouble later. We want to use the side length squared because the length and the width are the same. If this is 12, then this is 12. And it's like saying 12 times 12, or side times side, which is say, something that times itself, you're squaring it. So area equals 12 squared, area equals 144 inches squared. So that's 6-0. Your homework is to do that worksheet. Uh, let us know if you have any questions, and have a good one.